Here we have 9.8, finding a difference quotient for a rational function. So again, the difference quotient is this fraction here. And you're not done simplifying the fraction until you have canceled or reduced the h that is the denominator. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, just as we did in the previous topic, is find the expression for f of x plus h. So I'm going to take the f function, and wherever there was an x, we're now going to plug in an x plus h. And then if this can be simplified, you definitely want to simplify it. Now there's no number in front and no exponent there to apply, so those parentheses are really not needed. And since none of these three terms in the denominator are like terms, you cannot simplify this denominator any further. And you cannot reduce the numerator and the denominator. So this is the expression in its most simplest form. So what we're going to do from there is we're going to plug everything into here. So I have the expression for f of x plus h minus the expression for f of x all over h. Now remember, the goal is to cancel that h that's in the denominator, the big denominator. Now in order for me, this is a complex fraction. What is a complex fraction? A complex fraction is a fraction within fractions, right? So we have two fractions, really we have three fractions here. We have two fractions in the numerator and one fraction in the denominator. This is making this a complex fraction. In order to make it no longer complex, we have to multiply by the common denominator of all three fractions. And so since all of the denominators are different, we're going to have to multiply all three together. Now when you multiply by one, it's not going to change the expression. So I don't really need to multiply by the one. So we're going to multiply every fraction by the common denominator. What happens is that this will cancel this denominator, this will cancel this denominator, and here the denominator is just one, so it's not really going to cancel anything, but you don't have to write it as a fraction when it's over one. So what I end up with is I end up with four times x plus three minus four times x plus h plus three all over and don't try to multiply this out remember the goal is to cancel this h so you don't want to multiply things out because you want to cancel that h eventually so now i'm going to go ahead and distribute my four and distribute my negative four Keep the denominator exactly the same as it was. Do not multiply that out. And then I have 4x and negative 4x, 12 and negative 12. So I'm left with negative 4h over h times x plus 3 times x plus h plus 3. And then now, these are two factors, right? Negative 4 times h, and this is a factor, h times these other two things. As long as they are factors, meaning they're multiplied, then I can reduce them or cancel them. So my final expression here is negative 4 over x plus 3 times x plus h plus 3. And this is what Alex will want as your final answer, okay? Now these are very important because in calculus you are going to use the difference quotient. Um, I think in the first or second chapter, it's like one of the first things that you learn when you start getting into the calculus, okay? Um, there will, will be something called the derivative and in order for you to find the derivative by the definition, you need to use the difference quotient. So these difference quotients are definitely going to come back in calculus. I definitely want to practice them and be able to execute them properly. Now for this expression, what's the difference? This expression, oh, got a light going there. The first expression had a constant in the numerator. The second expression has a variable in the numerator. So 
see how that's going to affect um, work. So if I take f of x plus h, I'm going to plug in x plus h everywhere I see an x. And just by default, I'm going to always put it in parentheses. I'll decide later whether or not the parentheses were necessary. So then now once I have that, I'm trying to get this out of that sun, there we go. There's no number in front to multiply and no exponent to apply. So we're just going to write that without the parentheses. Same thing here, no number in front and no exponent to apply. So this is the expression. It cannot be simplified. You cannot cancel x plus h and x plus h. In order for you to cancel something, they have to be factors. And notice that even if I write this with the parentheses and I put the one and now this whole thing is a factor, when I do that down here, this is not x plus h times a negative eight. It's x plus h minus eight. And when it's added or subtracted, that is not a factor, okay? It has to be multiplied in order to be a factor. So you cannot cancel these x plus h's here. And that'll be the most common mistake that I see is that people are trying to cancel terms that are added and subtracted versus canceling only factors, things that are multiplied, okay? So you cannot simplify that expression any further. So we're gonna jump straight into the difference quotient. So then the difference quotient is going to give me this fraction minus this original fraction all over h. And just like before, you simplify it as you multiply each by the common denominator here. So we're gonna multiply by x plus, or x minus eight, sorry. x plus h minus 8, x minus 8, x plus h minus 8, and then the same at the bottom. And so here, this one's going to cancel, here the binomial is going to cancel, and I'm left with the x plus h, the whole thing, times this whole x minus 8, and then I'm left with x times x plus h plus 8. Oh, I'm sorry, minus 8. And then in the bottom, remember, do not multiply that h out because the goal is to cancel it. And I can only cancel it if it's a factor. Leave it factored out, okay? Don't multiply it in. Now here I do have to multiply this, so I'm going to get x squared minus 8x plus hx minus 8h. Here I'm going to distribute that my negative h and plus 8x all over and then now I'm going to go ahead and cancel my terms. So I have negative x squared, positive x squared, negative 8x, positive 8x, positive hx, negative hx. So I get negative 8h over h times x minus 8, x plus h minus 8. And so then the h's now do reduce. And so I get negative 8 over x minus 8, x plus h minus 8. And this is the final answer that they are looking for, okay? So although that there was a variable in the top, if you notice through all the mechanics of working out, simplifying that fraction, doesn't seem to still be a uh, variable in the numerator, okay? So with that said, that is the end of this particular topic, and now you have an example of both kinds of fractions, whether the original had a constant in the numerator or had a variable in the numerator.